Let's begin with the fifth and final section of our lecture in which we will talk about different lesions of the oral cavity. The lesions which we will discuss will be ankyloglossia, nicotine stomatitis and also submucous fibrosis. Lesions of the tongue and oral cavity, we have miscellaneous lesions like median rhomboid uh, glossitis. These are the red rhomboid area, no papillae. On dorsum of the tongue, which is asymptomatic, due to tuberculum impar. So this is, these are the median rhomboid glossitis. This is a miscellaneous lesion of the oral cavity and it is due to tuberculum impar. Due to chronic candida infection, we already discussed the candidal infection caused by the fungus Candida albican and it is also due to chronic, if it stays for the long time and become chronic, it causes median rhomboid uh, glossitis. Then we have some uh, geographical tongue where there is erythematous areas present, no papillae are present. There is irregular keratotic white outline. Migratory glossitis, which is asymptomatic. Then we have hairy tongue. Hairy tongue is another lesion, miscellaneous lesion due to excessive keratin. Uh, elongated filiform papillae are present. In the previous two conditions, we saw there are no papillae, but in this hairy tongue, there are filiform papillae present. Scraping of uh, H2O2 is the treatment. Fissure tongue. Fissures of the tongue or cracking of the tongue is a painful condition. It's uh, congenital due to syphilis anemia, uh, Malkerson rosenthal syndrome. Then we have fortis spots, which is uh, aberrant sebaceous gland. There is involvement of aberrant sebaceous gland. Then we have yellow brown or yellow spores present in this uh, for this spore disease and as the name show there are spores present which are yellow brown or yellow spots and then we have it's under buccal or labial mucosa so these are some common miscellaneous lesions under it come they come under the miscellaneous lesions of the oral cavity then ankyloglossia, ankyloglossia, uh, this is the tongue and this is the frenulum that attaches the tongue to the floor of the mouth. Ankyloglossia, there is speech defects present, true tongue tie, uncommon. So ankyloglossia is uh, in this true tongue tie is uncommon in this, there is uh, speech disorder, the release of the tongue and vertical closure is the treatment. So in chyloglossia or the tongue tie, there is speech problem, there is no true tongue tie which is uncommon, in not, it's not true tongue tie but it's uh, the free mobility of the tongue is affected and because of the immobility of the tongue there is speech disorder and the treatment is the freeing the tongue by the release and vertical closure. Incision of mucosal folds. Mobile tongue essential for oral hygiene. So our mobile tongue, mobility of the tongue is very important for the oral hygiene. So if it is not freely movable and there are attachments, adhesions, then it should be released and treated. Nicotine stomatitis. 
This is present in the smokers, people who smoke. There is nicotine stomatitis or inflammation of the tongue. Palatal mucosa, there is a red spots present on the palatal mucosa. Uh, umbilicated papular lesions due to inflammation of salivary gland, minor salivary gland. Parotid gland is the major salivary gland, but in this there is inflammation of the minor salivary glands. Nicotine stomatitis is a misnomer. So here, nicotine stomatitis. Stomatitis is inflammation of the tongue. It is common in the smoker as the name show from the nicotine, but it's misnomer because the tongue is not only affected, there is involvement of the uh, palate mucosa and also there is inflammation of the minor salivary gland. Submucous fibrosis. It is a chronic insidious process characterized by juxta epithelial deposition of fibrous tissue in oral cavity and pharynx. So it is a chronic insidious, not sudden, it's slow progressing process. There is deposition of, as the name show, uh, fibrous tissue in oral cavity and pharynx. Causes of some mucous fibrosis, there is um, socioeconomic status, uh, tobacco chewing, uh, areca nuts, alcohol and nutritional disorder, immune process, and the multifactorial. These are all the causes that lead to the deposition of fibrous tissue in the oral cavity and pharynx can be due to the socioeconomic status, tobacco chewing, people who chew on tobacco, areca nuts, alcohol and nutritional disorders. We already mentioned nutritional some factors like deficiency of B12, iron, folic acid, they can involve the oral cavity. Then we have some immune processes and also multifactorial factors. Pathogenesis linked with epithelial atrophy. More activated T lymphocytes, leukoplakia and squamous cell carcinoma associated high CD4 to CD8 plus lymphocyte ratio and the pathogenesis is the areca nut chewing what happens with this there is collection of activated lymphocytes and macrophages in sub epithelial layers of oral mucosa so with the chewing of the areca nut there is the at the side there is an increased level of uh, lymphocytes activated t lymphocytes and macrophage which are the cells which uh, play an important role in the inflammatory reaction and immune response there is activated t lymphocytes uh, with the, there is reduced production of antifibrotic cytokines and this cause less collagenous formation. There is increased uh, collagen production occurs and this is one pathway of the development of the disease. Then another is increased production of fibrin fibrinogenic cytokines. Uh, which act on mesenchymal cells, fibroblast proliferation, and this also cause increased collagen production. And then also the macrophages have the same effect. So the pathogenesis, how this disease develop and how the fibrous tissue deposition occur is because of activation of T lymphocytes 
and macrophages these T lymphocytes and macrophages ultimately act and cause increased production of collagen and this increased production is deposited in the different structures so that's the pathogenesis of the uh, sub mucus fibrosis condition Clinical features, it mainly affects people who are 20 to 40 years of age. Symptoms include there is intolerance to chilies and spicy food, mouth soreness, burning sensation, difficulty to protrude tongue, difficulty to open mouth fully, repeated vesicular eruption on palate and pillars. So all these are the clinical features, mainly cause soreness, pain uh, in the mouth, difficulty in protrusion of the tongue, difficulty in opening the mouth, and also a person has very poor tolerance to uh, chili and spicy food. Findings are redness of mucous membrane. This is all the redness of the mucous membrane. Progressive Christmas lock jaw because of the fibrosis tissue, fibrotic band and blanching, orodental hygiene is affected. Changes in soft palate, fascial perils, and buccal mucosa. So all these are different uh, findings present in the patients. Treatment is the medical treatment which includes steroids injection with uh, high lace, avoiding irritants like nuts, tobacco, jaw opening exercises because of the trismus there is difficulty in opening of the mouth also so exercises to increase the mobility of the mouth are helpful. Treat anemia or vitamin deficiency. Different nutritional factors are can cause this condition. So if there is nutritional deficiency, we need to treat them with the uh, good uh, nutrition and with the supplements. Surgical treatment is simple release of fibrosis and skin grafting. Bilateral tongue flaps and nasolabial flaps, uh, island partial mucoperiosteal flaps. So these are all the surgical treat treatments, removing the fibroid tissue and putting different flaps so to increase the oral hygiene and the mobility of the oral cavity. Bilateral radial forearm free flap. Surgical excision and buccal fat pad graft. So we have a lot of different surgical options for the treatment of the condition. Then also superficial temporal fascia flap and split skin graft. Uh, corono, coronoidectomy and temporal muscle myotomy. Coronoidectomy and removal of the coronoid process and then temporal muscle myotomy is also one of the surgical options for the treatment of this condition. So this was all about our topic disorders of the oral cavity in which we try to cover almost all the uh, major causes that can cause uh, disorders of the oral cavity. So thank you for watching Scardia.com.